I'm going to give a, a presentation today on the 23 daily practices that have allowed me to scale my life, my business, my mind, how I operate. Let me tell you about why these are important. So I have been participating in masterminds my, um, I'd say the last eight years of my life since I've really had the resources to do so. And they're powerful. They're extremely powerful. If you guys have watched the trajectory of my life, you'll see that I have, um, I'm walking the walk. Right. I'm, I, I'm, I'm making it happen in, in my business, in my life, in my family life, uh, as well as my coaching, as well as personally on a television show. All the things they are finding ways to express themselves in my life at a high level because I'm showing up for it. And I want to talk to you guys about how that works so that if any of you feel stuck in any way, either in your business in your family life, in just your energy on a day-to-day -day basis, then you'll have some tools and techniques to work through them. Now, as you guys know, astro flipping is not just real estate. Uh, I teach you guys all about the things that I've learned in the last 20 years that I've been doing this. Uh, but I can tell you that the way that you think, the thoughts you have, how you approach people, how you approach circumstances and situations is very, very closely tied to the results you're seeing in your life. So first and foremost, I want you guys all to ask yourself a question right now. Are you living the life financially, spiritually, in your business? Are you living the life that you want at the moment? Are you living the life that you want at the moment? If the answer to that question is no, then what I can say to you is there is a disconnect between the thoughts that you're thinking, the way that you're feeling and approaching your day-to-day -day life, because you and your experiences outside of you are a reflection of what's happening inside of you. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. The life that you're experiencing outside of you is a reflection of the way you are thinking and feeling inside of you. So financially, if things could be better, then your ideas about money could be better. Relationally, with your family, your spouse, your children, could things be better? Then I can tell you that the way that you're thinking and the way that you're feeling and approaching the relationships in your life could be better. They could be elevated. In terms of your energy levels and your day-to-day -day capacity to thrive, could it be better? And if it could, then I can tell you right now that the way that you are approaching your day-to-day -day life mentally and emotionally could also be better. Now, these topics, the things that I'm gonna share with you guys today, I didn't make this stuff up, okay? I, I'm, I'm, I'm not the, the genius who thought of all of this. A very good friend of mine, Matthew Ferry, who I have been in masterminds with for years and years and years, he put these together and allowed me to share them with our students um, so that I could, I could spread the message, so I could spread the techniques and the tools that he has developed over decades and decades of studying this work uh, and, and compiling it all in a very easy to understand format so that you guys can take this stuff and, and run with it and, and grow. So first and foremost, we're gonna talk about the subconscious mind prison. Okay, the subconscious mind prison. The subconscious mind prison, that is the part of your brain that tells you to be fearful. The thought stream that permeates many people's day-to-day -day existence, which traps them in the emotion of fear, paralyzing them from being able to take the necessary steps that they need to have a better life. The next thing we're going to go over are the hidden motives the subconscious hidden motives that we all have as human beings, how we mentally game ourselves into thinking we are doing something when we are actually doing another thing. And then finally, we're going to go over 23 daily practices that you can implement into your life so that you can find ways to identify the hidden, motive, the hidden motives, 
as well as escape the subconscious mental prison. The subconscious mind prison, what is that? Well, all of us are aware that we have had an evolutionary process to become these incredible machines, these incredible biological creatures that we call human beings, uh, biological and spiritual. Uh, but I'll tell you that the biology, the evolutionary path that got us here was one that was completely full of fear, full of fear. All right. Now that's actually not a bad thing, right? Because if you think about our ancestors as human beings, they should have been fearful, right? There was all kinds of crazy, scary things out there that were there to kill them. They didn't have the sophisticated weaponry that we have. They didn't have the sophisticated infrastructure to keep wild animals away. They didn't have the cities and the cooperative, the cooperative societies that we've evolved into to help people to allow ourselves to thrive. So a lot of us comes from an evolutionary path that had a lot of fear in it. Now, that fear is what kept us alive. It's what allowed us to procreate and reproduce and hide. But what I can tell you is that if you are tethered to the fear-based mind, the fear-based approach to your day-to-day -day life, you are 1,000% you are going to be living a small life. Now, let's think about some examples of that. Do you have people in your life that are telling you your journey in entrepreneurship is a fool's errand, that you are setting yourself up for failure, that you are setting yourself up for hurt. Many of us have those people in our families. Some of us have that person as a spouse or children. Some of us, that person might be our own mind, our own mind, our own thoughts, telling us that we are messing ourselves up, that we are wasting resources, wasting time that we are, are doing wrong by our families by trying to do something like entrepreneurship or learn how to flip real estate so that we could have more financial freedom in our life. And a lot of us have guilt associated with that from the people that are in our lives. What I want to say is that thinking in that fearful train of thought, in that stream of fear, will absolutely keep you alive. It'll absolutely keep you in your nine to five job. It'll absolutely keep you earning just enough money to never get out of debt. It'll absolutely keep you in a situation where you are trading your freedom for safety and security. Now, if that is okay for you, then maybe this life isn't for you. Maybe entrepreneurship isn't for you. But I can say that I don't think you make it to this call. I don't think you make it to this community if that's the case. So already, the 103 people that are participating on today's call have within them that spark that tells them this small life that we might be living right now isn't for us, that we're meant for bigger, that we're meant for more, that we're meant for freedom, that we're meant for a different type of security. Matthew found these hidden motives within the human structure that keeps us in a survival methodology, in a survival framework. All right. Now, I want you guys to frame these two differences, survival and thriving. Are you surviving right now or are you thriving right now? If you are surviving right now, and that's going to be many of us, and I often fought, find myself in the same boat, just because I've got a big bank account, guys, doesn't mean that I don't fall into these hidden motives to survive as well. And it doesn't mean that I'm not, uh, I, that I have, I have found a way outside of this of these of these hidden motives to survive all of us have work to do here now these seven hidden motives 
are as follows. The first, greed. The second, grudge. The third, hatred. Fourth, victimology. Fifth, illogical rules. Sixth, false humility. Seventh, traitor. Eight, pridefulness. Nine, resistance to what is. And 10, laziness. I'm gonna go through these hidden motives so that we can unpack them a little bit and we can try and identify where in our lives some of these motives may exist. So we'll start with one. Greed, very easy to identify. We all know when we are having moments of greed, when we're in a deal and all of a sudden we're in a JV situation and we're now talking about splitting up the proceeds and you see where people start to get funny. You see where human beings can really, really show what's inside of them when we have money on the table, right? How many of us have been in a deal or talk to somebody about a potential deal, say it's a, a micro flip or a JV, and the concept of splitting the fees just completely turns the other person off on the other line. How many of us have had that conversation? I've had it where I'm, I'm talking to a wholesaler and I'm explaining what I can bring to the table in terms of value. And all of a sudden, just because I can bring a buyer, just because I'm able to bring hundreds of thousands of dollars of liquidity to the table that they are not able to bring, some way, somehow, in that individual's mind, they would rather not do a deal than have to share. Who's, who's ever encountered a wholesaler that stubborn that when you have a conversation with them about a possible JV, they refuse or they reject an opportunity to collaborate just because they want to keep the idea of making more money alive. I, I have, I've had it happen to me. Now, the funny thing is, is that can actually be us sometimes. That can actually be us sometimes, right? Where in your life have you had circumstances or situations where you've been in a relationship with somebody and you are waiting for an opportunity to gain the upper hand or to get more? Now, guys, greed is one of the easiest hidden motives to survive that we can identify. And that's why we start there but we've all experienced this. And some of us are still experiencing this. Let's say you're in a relationship with your significant other and they're not providing as much economic security as you're providing. Does resentment build up there? Do you feel like I'm not gonna wash the dishes until I see him or her make the bed? Do you find yourself in a situation in life or in relationships sometimes where you won't give until you get, or it's hard for you to give? This is where that hidden motives to survive lives. Now, it doesn't make you a bad person because this happens to you. You're not a bad person because you are a human being. This is an absolute natural phenomenon in every single one of us. This necessity to hoard, to have more. In 2020, when the pandemic reared its ugly head in March and human beings had an opportunity to go out to the stores and collect items that were helped them, what did we do? We hoarded toilet paper because for whatever reason, we all thought we were going to shit our brains out during the pandemic. I don't understand it. I don't understand. I don't understand the why, but I can tell you this. I have a pantry full of toilet paper at my house. I do. 
So I'm just as susceptible to this garbage as everybody else. And I'm sure out of the 107 participants that are on today's call right now, some of you bought a little extra too much toilet paper in that time as well. Some of you might still have bottles of hand sanitizer in your pantries that you're not using anymore. Green, it's there, it's identifiable. We know what it looks like. We know what it does to us. It makes us act in irrational, illogical ways, but it blocks our blessings and it stops us from being able to transcend survival consciousness and to move forward into a consciousness where we thrive. Now, I, I'm telling you guys, and I say it over and over again, if you do not believe that your economic foundation is a, as an aspect of your consciousness, then I'm not doing my job here correctly. How you think and how you feel is reflected in how you live. Number two, grudge. This one's a great one. How many of us are so excited to finally make it, to get that deal, that big juicy $100,000 check, $50,000 check, to live a life of financial security? How many of us are working so hard for that so that we can show that one person that didn't believe in us that we could do it? How many of us have that chip on our shoulder? I had it. Maybe the girl who got away. Maybe the guy who got away. Maybe it's a teacher. Maybe it's your mom, your dad. What I can say is when you attach an energy of grudge to your capacity or to the activities that you're doing to further your business, every ounce of that effort will be charged with that grudge. That chip, that weakening energy of grudge permeates the action that you are taking because the reason that you're doing what you're doing is to show somebody that you could do it. Now, grudge is a powerful motivator and I'm not telling you it's not gonna get you to the place that you might think you wanna be. But how many of us have seen some really miserable rich people? I have. And I can tell you that the very miserable people that I've seen make it in life financially haven't made it in life emotionally, mentally, or spiritually, and they are typically alone. They are typically sitting in their castles with nothing but yes people around them. completely disconnected from the joy of abundance, grudge. So if any of you are on this path, on this journey, because somebody said you couldn't do it, that's okay. But now is the time for you to release that to release that grudge, to actually have forgiveness for whoever that person was that told you you couldn't make it. Because if you look back at it, when you peel back the layer of when someone is negative to you, when someone is telling you that you're incapable or that a big life or, or financial security isn't for you, they're typically just projecting what they believe for themselves. So if you are motivated or moving in a direction out of grudge, 
Now is an opportunity for you to release it. Number three, hatred. This is a tough one because we see all kinds of atrocities committed out in life because of it. The us versus them. We saw this play out in dramatic fashion politically over the last couple of years as America has divided itself. We have seen lines get drawn where people group into a thought of we think this way, they think that way, our way is right, their way is wrong. If you find yourself motivated in a thought stream that propels you to think that what you are doing is better than or more right than what others are doing, I can tell you that hatred is at play. Now, here's where it gets tricky. For a lot of us as entrepreneurs, we tend to judge people that have nine to five jobs. Or we judge ourselves for having a nine to five job. How many of us have felt that? Where we feel less than because we still have a nine to five because we still haven't taken a leap or removed the golden handcuffs or figured it out to a, to a level where we've made it in our life. That's how subtle this can get. That's how much we game ourselves in the way that we can think. Now, I'm on a live stream a couple of times a week, and I can tell you that in the comments, sometimes I see this. I see this. When we're all congratulating ourselves for taking the steps and taking the, the leaps to being entrepreneurs, to making cold calls, to calling agents, to getting our first deal, to knocking it out of the park, to building a business like Mahmood, where he makes $175,000 a month, all that, we feel so damn good about it. Yet we'll look over at the person who's holding a nine to five job and we'll judge them for it. If you've had that judgment for others or for yourself, now is your opportunity to release that. We're all doing the best we can in the circumstances we're in. And if people didn't work nine to five jobs, how the hell would society survive? We're not all meant to do the same thing. So before you judge that person working at McDonald's or that person laying on the sidewalk next to their tent full of their entire worldly belongings, before you judge that person, understand that in that judgment, lies the blocking of your blessing. In that judgment, you block your blessings. Next, victim. Ooh, this is a doozy. Because a lot of us, especially when things don't go our way, when we're learning this stuff, this is where we fall. So I would say that the majority of entrepreneurs have a very difficult time with victim mentality, okay? And that's when the other wholesaler didn't have it under contract and now my, my buyer's pissed off at me and blah, 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 and now my first deal didn't get done. I see victim in there, right? It's other people's responsibility. It's other people's responsibility for my life. Where are you allowing yourself to play the victim? Did your spouse not complete the housework that they were supposed to complete, which caused you to have to come home and do it for them, which kept you from making the calls that you needed to make that kept you from talking to the agent that had your first deal? Have you ever let yourself go down that train of thought? 
Where did you make yourself a victim in the last 30 days? I'll tell you where I did. When I got that email, I allowed it to make me a victim because I sat there for 30 minutes and I thought to myself, man, why the hell am I doing this? Why do I spend so many hours of my life doing this, teaching people, sharing what I've learned in 20 years of real estate? Why am I doing this? When nobody sends me an email thanking me for my work, but they send me emails pissed off because I didn't comp their house. Why is that? I let myself play the victim. Now, is it true that people don't send me messages and thank me? Absolutely not. I get thanks from people all the time, random strangers, people on the internet. So many of you guys DM me, email me. But in that moment, when I sat there like a little baby being a victim, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. I needed to live in that pain. Now, once I became aware that I was playing the victim, I, was allow I allowed myself to forgive myself for it and release it. Because I don't need that. You don't need that. What a disservice it would be to the community if I allowed somebody in their victim consciousness to spread that victim consciousness to me to turn all of you into victims. How terrible would that be? See how it spreads? Five, illogical rules. This one hits for a lot of us that come from very strong or extreme faith-based lives. Again, uh, you all know that I have a tremendous amount of love for God and I bring God into everything I do. Um, but there are some illogical ways that we think of our creator or we think of life and, and how this all came to be. And when other people don't have the same viewpoints as us, we make them wrong. Have you ever judged somebody for looking different than you? Have you ever judged an extremely fat person for the way that they live? Have you ever judged a person of a different race, sexual orientation? Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you allowed an illogical rule or an illogical idea of disconnection between you and every other human being to allow you to think you were better than somebody else? A lot of us have an illogical rule in our idea of what God wants for us with respect to our financial lives. We've heard and been told in many different ways and, and phraseologies that money is wrong. That to make it could make you evil. That when you win, somebody else loses. How many of us are grappling with the concept of with respect to money that blocks us from receiving it, that makes us feel guilty for making it? I've had it. I just was on a Bigger Pockets podcast and I talked about the deal I did where I made $450,000 on a multifamily property. And I was told in the comments, or was it was an email, one of the two, that I should be ashamed of myself for ripping off that seller. Well, guys, let me tell you a little bit about that seller. Okay. That seller is the owner of batch leads. Okay. They're very rich, first and foremost. Secondly, that seller thought that they were selling to me at the top 
dollar that they could get given the income that that property was producing. And they were right. Because it wasn't until that property gets released out at a higher rate that new value was realized. That seller is not even 40 years old, has a net worth of over $5 million, yet somehow, because they did a convenience deal with me for cash, I did something that made somebody else feel I should be ashamed. Think of that. How many of us have been in a deal where we're making a good amount of money and have had guilt about it? Is that logical or illogical? Six, false humility. This one hits me all the time. All the time. Where I'm dimming my light because the shine hurts other people in the room. How many of us have had to act less than in the presence of people who are bothered by it? You ever been around a friend or a family member who whenever you talk about what's going on in your life or your business, you see the way that their face changes, you feel the energy shift in their, in their body, you see them getting upset, you hear their voice crack when they respond, they take deep gulps when you're explaining to them your wins and you pick on that, you pick up on that. You see it. When I talk about what's happening in my life that's positive or that's good or expansive, it negatively affects these people. Who can identify a circumstance like that in their life right now? As business owners, this happens to us a lot with staff needing to minimize your accomplishments, minimize your life, to dim down the brightness of your existence because it makes other people uncomfortable is false humility. If it is in you to show it, to speak it, to claim it, it is no one's business to stop you from having that, to keep you from experiencing a shine that God has given you, an opportunity to inspire other people. When you become your highest and best version of yourself, the one thing you will not be able to help but do is inspire people behind you to do the same thing for themselves. It is your obligation as a human being to show that path. It is your responsibility to provide a roadmap to those behind you who seek freedom. Turning down the light stops that inspiration from happening. You never know that the words that you might speak to somebody one day when you speak into them, an opportunity, a business venture, an idea, concept, that you might be holding somebody's entire future back. False humility. Where is it present in your life? See it and release it. Traitor. This is when what we say and do is an incongruence with how we think and feel. How many of us have that in our lives where we don't say the thing we wanna say? And I'm not talking about in an ego way where we're just nasty to people. It's not, that's not the same thing as being honest. But where are you being a traitor to yourself and other people? Where are you saying you are one way and then doing it another? Now, this concept of 
fakeness, being a traitor to our true selves. This has been a concept that artists, musicians, painters, screenwriters, they've all dove into this concept of authenticity, realness. Where are you living authentically and where are you being a phony? Are there people in your life that you bend for, that you behave different ways than you would normally behave to impress? Where do you see yourself being a traitor to your own self? For us, a lot of this comes when we tell ourselves that we are working hard at something, but we're really not doing it. Now, I've had an opportunity to go through a lot of the Kajabi logins with our students and especially the ones when I get an email like, hey man, I'm really struggling, da, 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 da. Uh, I'm working, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working at this hours upon hours every day. Uh, it's just not, I'm just having a really hard time. And then I go in and I look and they've gotten through maybe two or three videos in the entire course. So when I see that, you get that email, and then I put that next to what someone's actually done. Then if I took and I asked them for their KPIs, which I tend to do, if you've ever gotten an email, if you've ever emailed me an email like that, and I've responded to you and I've said, hey, I'd love to see your KPIs. I'd love to see how you track your numbers. Austin does a week, a, a call every week now where he's sharing his KPI tracker with everybody so that we can all be accountable to our numbers of output. Are you really working as hard as you think you are? Are you really making as many calls as you think you are? This is a big one. Because a lot of us tend to bullshit ourselves quite a bit. And again, guys, I'm not saying this, I'm not telling us this so that we all leave feeling bad. Forget that. That's not, that's not, the, that's not useful. It's not good. But identifying what it is, seeing it and saying, hey, I'm a total liar there. I'm bullshit. That's okay. It's okay to call yourself out, to be real about it. Pride. When have you just let yourself get stuck in a position? And no matter what somebody says to you, you're unbending, unwilling to change because pride won't let you do it. You have to be right. Where do I see pride in my life? Now, again, um, this isn't work where I'm not going to share with you guys my shortcomings because what would be the point of that? If I can't give you an example of what it looks like to be authentic and to truly inventory ourselves, shouldn't even be here because then I'm bullshit. For me, where does pride get in the way? Well, I live in a world of high influence people. I'm surrounded by people of influence, people who have more influence than me, people who have less influence than me, people who are better speakers than me, people who might be doing larger deals than me, people who have better bodies than me, might, might be better looking, more engaging with people, whatever that might be. I can allow myself sometimes to stop myself from engaging in groups or participating in activities or events because there'll be people there who make me uncomfortable with myself. I am allowing pride to stop me from going out and actually doing the thing that I should be doing and helping the people that I'll resonate with. I let pride stop me from doing my job. You ever been in a situation in a deal with somebody and you act 
and you say to yourself or you justify the way you're being on principle, who's had that? Who said that? Who's used those words? Well, it's just the principle, bro, sister. The principle is your pride. Where in your day and where in your life right now are you allowing pride to block your blessing? Identify it, observe it, release it. Resistance. Ooh. This is where we resist what is. What is? If what is for you right now is a negative bank account, hard relationship with your spouse, a terrible work environment, do you beat yourself up every day about why things aren't different as opposed to leaning into what's happening and affecting change? Have you ever gotten so obsessed with a shitty deal that you wouldn't let it go? Where you worked it and worked it and worked it and, and just couldn't stop because the idea of something not working out for you was just so unbearable to deal with that rather than do the thing for yourself, which would have been to cut your losses and move on to the next opportunity, you spent an entire week wasting time trying to make something work that wasn't going to work. I see this happen a lot because I, I, I interact with you guys often and, and some of you guys come to me with some absolutely crazy deals. Like, hey, Jamil, I got this tire shop. It's full of $3 million worth of tires. There's gotta be a deal here, right? If I've ever steered you away from doing a type of deal it's not because i i don't want you to do that deal it's because often what i can see there is going to be a situation that is outside of our pay grade at the moment i'm trying to gain you i'm trying to put you in a position to succeed doing this often what will allow to have happen is we will rest in a situation because it's an easy place to rest all right, so we'll have, oh my God, I got this traction on this tire shop. Well, now I got to do something about this tire shop. Well, why is that? Well, I really just want to sell this tire shop because the thought of getting back on the phone and doing agent outreach again just exhausts me. Well, then are we working on the tire shop because we don't want to do outreach anymore or because we really believe in, in the tire shop? That's what I'm talking about. How many of us have allowed ourselves to sit in that resistance? To what is when a deal doesn't work out some of you quit it's not for me this is too hard i don't have the time that's when you are resisting what is when you are resisting the lesson that's in front of you and learning why it didn't work rather than just giving up how many of us have been in relationships with significant others in our lives where they were toxic and you could look in that person's face and know this person's going to ruin my life and I'm going to ruin theirs. Fast forward to the wedding happens, happens every day, guys, got a 50% over a 50% divorce rate in this country. Resistance to what is and what is, is what's real, what's true. And then lastly, lazy. All of us get into this. It's Sunday today. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in California right now. I, I, I could, I could have said, Austin, sorry, I'm lazy today. I don't want to show up. I could. I won't. I won't. I don't. I fight through lazy every day. I have to wake up at 4.30 in the morning, five o'clock sometimes when I get, uh, when I'm lucky, but typically 4.30 so that I can make it to set every single day on time. Because I need the three hours that allow me to drink water, work out and meditate. But I'll tell you when that alarm is beeping, sometimes I have an opportunity. I have an opportunity to hit snooze, or decide that morning I didn't need to work out or decide that morning that I don't have to meditate or I could skip something for a little bit more sleep. 
How many of us allow that to happen to us more often than not? It can happen. And it happens especially with activities that are hard to do, right? Like outreach. When we're doing agent outreach or we're doing wholesaler outreach or we are, you know, and this is where, well, like, for instance, say, for instance, you're talking to uh, real estate agents and one sends you a couple of deals. Do you allow yourself to get so caught up in those couple of deals that you forget that you still have 30 more people to talk to today? Or do you allow lazy to trick you into thinking you did enough? Now, Feels a little hopeless sometimes, doesn't it? Because we're like, man, we are broken. There are so many things out there that are traps waiting for us to find a way to bring us back to survival mode, to bring us back to a low vibration, a low conscious way of living. What are ways that we can move past this or transcend these hidden motives to survive? Well, my beautiful friend, Matthew Ferry, came up with these 23 days of daily practices that you can implement into your day-to-day -day life to give yourself freedom from those subconscious survival concepts. Day one. Wake up in the morning and set your intention to be happy. I know this sounds very simple, guys. But rather than waking up and staring at our phone, what if we took a moment and set an intention? How many of us believe in the power of intention and what it can do in our lives? Awesome. It's a lot of you. In, in fact, intention is so important that in criminal justice intent what was happening in your heart and mind is really nine tenths of how severe of a punishment you'll get if you look at people who kill people there's third degree second degree and first degree murder right Terrible, terrible example to give. I'm sorry, guys, but, but think about it. The intent there is what makes things different. Did you intend to do something? Did you intend to do this or was it an accident? Where was your intent? Intention is so important that literally how we frame our entire day or what happens to us in a day can very easily be adjusted by the intention that we set for it in the morning. Now, for me, something that I've done is I have in my calendar intentions. I set intentions in my phone as alarms so that when I wake up first thing in the morning, I set an intention to have a happy day or whatever intention I'm trying to set that day, successful, powerful, authentic, whatever that might be, I begin the day by setting an intention. Two, total and complete acceptance of what is. You are here and nowhere else right now. And if here for you is the negative account balance, and 13 toes, accept it. There's a reason that you needed the negative account balance because it needed to push you to making a change. And the 13 toes, I still don't know why you have those, but we'll figure it out. Acceptance. Accept what is. Always. You are exactly where you are supposed to be. Now, an example of that, guys, I can look at my life today and I can tell you that if I go back 30,000 feet and I look at all of the crummy things that I've had to experience in my life to get here today, I can show you that every 
error, every lesson, every wrong turn I had to take to get here today. They don't happen without it. This amazing life doesn't happen without, those, without that pain, those lessons. So accept where you are today and understand that if you're in pain, that there's love in that pain, you have to find it. Day three, acknowledge and appreciate the people that you have in your life. Nobody is in your life by mistake, including me. And you and mine. None of this is a mistake. None of this is an accident. None of this is random. And if you feel like it's random, again, you're not looking deep enough. Look at the circumstances that got you here today. Look, we're all in a good place. We have the resources to even be on this call. And you're 99% better off than so many humans out there. Think of that. What got you here today? Who got you here today? Are you appreciating them and are you showing them the adequate gratitude for being a part of your journey to this point? This one's fun because we do this all the time. Holding people accountable to agreements they didn't make with us. Who does that? You mad at your girlfriend or boyfriend for not doing something you wanted them to do when, and, and when you look at it, you guys never even agreed that, you, that they would do it? But you just think they should? Do you find yourself irritated with people at your job because they should do something away? They do something in a way that you don't particularly like or doesn't resonate with you. You find yourself judging them for that. Are you holding people accountable to agreements they never actually made with you? Day five, find a place and a way to appreciate everybody that you encounter as often as possible. There was a homeless man sleeping at my house the other night here in LA, basically in my doorway. If I opened my door, there he was, passed out. I heard him snoring all night long. And in the morning, I had a podcast to shoot at my house. And so I woke him up and I said, hey, bro, it's time to move. And he was really upset. He was really upset. He was upset at me. He was upset at life. He was upset at the day. He was upset I woke him up. He was having a hard day. Now, I actually had an opportunity to have a conversation with him and I told him that it wasn't my intention to give him a hard time, that I appreciated the fact that he was having a rough go of it. I gave him a little bit of money and I told him to have some breakfast and a coffee and, and to just try and have a better day. And his mood went from you are the devil to I can't believe somebody showed me a little bit of compassion today. He apologized for swearing at me, for being mean, for being rude, shook my hand about three or four times and then went along his way. Now, why do I talk about this in appreciation? Because I appreciated the fact that I had that opportunity to have that interaction. To be able to see a person living in a pretty substandard way as as worthy of being in this beach house as me. I'm appreciative of that understanding. 
Day six, kindness. Day seven, practice being unoffendable. When are we allowing ourselves to get into our feelings and allowing our feelings about a circumstance or a situation or a person to stop us from adding value or being beneficial to themselves and ourselves? Are there people in your life right now that you're saying, I'm not going to bless this person, or I'm not going to answer this person's call, or I'm not going to do business with this person because they offend me in some way, or I don't like their political beliefs, or um, I don't like this or that about them? Are you blocking your potential blessings out of an offense? Day eight, make a contribution to every person you meet. Think about that. Are you finding ways to add value to every interaction? This is tough, but once we get a hang of it, you will see that when you add value to people's lives without seeking anything in return, you often get blessed. For instance, I had an opportunity to meet Don and Janelle in LA at, through a friend, through a mutual friend. They watched Wholesale Hotline. They weren't a part of Astro Flipping. I had no financial gain from being kind and working with them and contributing to their lives. Today I see they are here on this call. Interesting how this works, right? You make a contribution to people's lives. And in fact, they hopped on to the secret agent challenge. The secret agent challenge helped them, helped them get a deal under contract, I believe. And, and, and you've been doing well. And I've been communicating with Don and Janelle through uh, social media platforms and we've been talking and I've been watching how these guys have, have, have really just blown themselves up, not only on their social branding, but just as real estate investors as a whole. And now I have the blessing of having these two people be a part of this community. And I know that them being in this community is not only going to add value to you, but you're going to add value to them. And it started with me making a contribution. But uh, let me share with you guys a little fact. Even though we weren't, they weren't in astro flipping and, and, and they really weren't a part of this community yet. They were, on, they were watching Wholesale Hotline. They were, they were listening and learning from it every Monday. I had the pleasure of going to a function, to an event where they were at. Now they know that I love chicken wings. So when I go to this event, guess what they have waiting for me? Now, I'm not saying guys do this when I come to your town or whatever, because, you know, it, it, it's not always feasible. It's, it, it's hard to do. These guys had a chef prepare me fresh chicken wings at this event, knowing that I loved them. They wanted to make a contribution to me because they felt that I had contributed to their lives. This is the reciprocity, Right contribute to people so that they can contribute to you or so that others can contribute to you. And I only just share this example because I get to see Don right now on this, on this, um, on this call and it makes me happy. It truly does. It truly warms me up to see this opportunity to provide value to people, to give and receive. What a blessing. Don, Janelle, welcome. It's good to see you guys. Day nine, solving problems by getting into alignment rather than forcing the issue. How many of us feel that when we have something going on in our life, we steamroll through it, we'll get through it? How many of us approach problems in that way? I've done it. What about finding ways to solve problems by aligning to the interests of the other individual. Finding a solution through mutual benefit rather than your own perspective. 
how can getting into alignment help us in our business? How can this help us as astro flippers? What can we do? Well, if you guys can see, the way that I approach working with wholesalers is by getting into alignment with them, by seeing how I can add value to their situation, hopefully by selling a deal for more money than they'd be able to sell it for, or bringing a buyer to a table or a situation that they didn't have a buyer for, or by allowing a real estate agent to sell a home that would have been unfinanceable on the traditional market, or by paying an agent more money in commissions because they're working with me. I'm aligning to the interest of the wholesaler. I'm aligning to the interest of the real estate agent. I'm aligning to the interest of the title officer, the escrow company. How can you find alignment with the different people who are in your business? Make a list. Make a list of all the people that you work with in a transaction. Wholesaler, dispo wholesaler, title company, closing attorney. And write out the things they care about. If you were an escrow officer, what would you want more of? If you were a realtor, what would you want more of? If you were a wholesaler, what would you want more of? If your problem is you're not getting deals done, then you are not thinking in a way that allows you to align to the people that you're talking to. There's still a disconnect there. Are you following that? If you are still struggling in resistance and, and things aren't working for you, it means you haven't found total alignment with the people that you're working with. You're either disconnecting from the realtors that you're trying to talk to, or you're disconnecting to the wholesalers that you're trying to connect to, or you're disconnecting from your consistency and your follow-up because they do want to work with you. You're just not showing up when they're ready to work. How do you get into greater alignment? If you are living in a problem right now, whatever that is, here's a truth that you're gonna hate, but it's real. It's always you. It's never them. You are responsible for your own reactions. You are responsible for all of it, every bit of it is your responsibility. The good things, the bad things, the things that seem totally random, you're still responsible for it. I was walking in Malibu last summer and those of you, some of you might know this story, I fell in a canyon and I snapped my ankle and it was painful and it was horrible and I hated it. And I couldn't imagine how that could have been my fault. It was an accident. Well, something that you guys don't know is I had been telling myself for years that I'm clumsy, that I'm not physically strong, that I'm not physically capable, that I'm weak. And I allowed myself to buy that lie. So much so that it became my reality. So that when I was in a situation where I needed to have more balance, where I needed to have more grounding, where I needed to stay on my feet, I wasn't able to. So yes, it was still me. My concepts, my ideas helped shape my reality. Day 11, practice being in a state of appreciation. Now let's use that example of me breaking my ankle in the, in the canyon. 
How could I possibly be appreciative of that? Well, I was appreciative of the four Australians who came to my rescue and carried me out. I was appreciative that I had a voice loud enough that they heard me screaming. I was appreciative that there were human beings that had an open enough heart that they heard the cries of this man losing his mind in the canyon and what they were doing to come and help me. I was appreciative of just general kindness that day. I was appreciative of the fact that that pain reminded me that I was alive. I was appreciative of the friend who drove in a traffic jam down the PCH to my rescue to take me to the hospital. I was appreciative of learning about how good that friend was. I was appreciative of the weeks of rest that it allowed me to get because I wasn't able to really move around and do things. I was appreciative of the opportunity that my wife had to be around me and help me out. I was appreciative of that scooter that I rode around on uh, for six weeks that actually was really fun and I kind of miss. That's being in a state of appreciation. That even though I was hobbling around on one leg, there were so many cool things that I could appreciate of that situation. Finding joy in the mundane. If you are struggling with doing some of the actions and activities that we teach in this program on outreach, if you are struggling with comping, if you are struggling with having confidence in talking to real estate agents, if, we're, if you are struggling in getting wholesalers to resonate with you, to feel like you're somebody that you could add, that could add value to their business and life, if you are struggling to do these things, then I can say that you probably aren't having a lot of joy in the actions that you're taking every day. And if you can't find joy in those activities, people will feel it. People will feel it. You ever gone to a restaurant and had an interaction with somebody? And realize that that person hates what they're doing and felt it. They're not finding the joy in their activity. If I came to these calls and I didn't like it, or they were taxing on me or they felt bad, would you be able to tell? yeah, I wouldn't stay on four hours longer than I'm contracted to stay. When things are chaotic, and they will get chaotic, especially if you're doing things right, how do you find peace? For myself, I'm running around from town to town, from airport to airport, plane seat to plane seat, and it's chaotic. I have to find brief moments of grounding myself and finding peace to be able to function. That's my situation. Your situation might be you have, are holding a bunch of rentals and there's all kinds of craziness going on with your tenants. Your situation could be you work a job where your boss is a total turd and the people that you're working with don't like their jobs. And so it's kind of tough being in that environment. How do you find peace there? How do you make peace when other people around you are not at peace. Well, you do that by first, again, the practices right up to, up to this point, you know, using appreciation, using gratitude, 
finding joy even in unpleasant action. Are you seeing the prosperity that is around you in every way? Do you pay attention to just how much is out there? Are your eyes open to all of the different experiences, the animals, the people? Have you ever wondered, how are all the birds being fed? This is an abundant life. This is an abundant planet. Every other creature on this planet finds a way to have all that they need met. We're the ones who are constantly feeling like we're living in lack. Pay attention to the bounty that's beside you and you'll be able to participate in it. Day five, accept what you have. Focus on the things you want. It's important that we have goals. It's important that we have targets, that we strive towards getting something. You're not going to get to a point where you're doing 10 deals a month if you don't have the goal to do 10 deals a month. I'm sorry. You need to have the goal. But in order for the goal to achieve, you have to be in complete acceptance of what, what is. And if that means that you're accepting the fact that you have more work to do, that you have more outreach to do, that you have more houses to comp, that you have more skills to gain, then that allows you to do the necessary work to hit the goal. But if we're in denial of what actually is, then we're not doing the work that needs to be done to get us to the goal that we're trying to get to. And if you ever have to question how incredible this experience is that we're having, just take a look at yourself for a moment in the mirror and see how marvelous of a creation you are. I mean, gosh, guys, there's, Billions of cells in you right now firing off, keeping you here, keeping you alive. There is a symphony of hormones and chemical reactions and electrical impulses that are creating this experience for you. When life breaks down, find a way to celebrate it. Like that time in the canyon for me, that would be a breakdown. I found ways to celebrate how painful that situation was for me. I allowed it to identify a really good friend I allowed it to identify an opportunity to slow down. I allowed it as an opportunity for me to connect deeper with my wife. I allowed it as an opportunity to ride around in a cool scooter. Celebrate them. I talk about this a lot, but detaching from an outcome is absolutely an important aspect of not driving yourself crazy and also getting to the place that you're trying to go. Look, guys, if you are so stuck on the destination, you will not be present for the process. And if you are not present in the process, you're going to be working half-assed. The example I like to use is how many of you drive to a location that you're familiar with, and once you get there, you wonder, how the hell did I even get here? I, I, I don't even remember being in my car. I don't remember all the turns that I took. I don't remember if I passed anybody, I don't even, I have no idea how I just got from this place to this place. Who, who goes through that? Who's done that? That's you out of your presence. You see how effective you are? You can drive a, an automobile and not kill people in autopilot. 
You stopped at every red light. You probably used your turning signals as well. You stayed the speed limit. You were very effective on autopilot, but you weren't present. Set your intention every day for what you're trying to achieve and then forget about the outcome because what's gonna happen is gonna happen. And that might mean a lesson for you or that might mean a blessing for you, but either way, it's what you need. Remember, there are no rules in life. Guys, this is a hard one for a lot of us who come from very structured lives or the military or anything that had created a, a maze in our mind. If there is a maze in your mind of all these rules that you need to follow, guys, blow the walls up. There are no rules. You get to decide. How you play the game is your decision. And if you find yourself in these negative thought patterns, these loops, these loops of showing yourself that you're not worthy, these loops where you are being negative about yourself or other people, these loops that allow you to live in a victim mindset. Anytime that you attach to a stream of thinking that doesn't serve you or the greater good, it's not your stream. And I think one of the most freeing things I ever learned about myself is that I am not my thoughts. How many of you have driven down a road and for a moment, for a moment, thought about driving into the car that's coming right in front of you? How many of you have had that, just like that flash thought? The flash thought. Now, you're not suicidal. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not like, you know, clinically insane or anything. But that cr crazy thought came into your head. Is that you? No. It's not you. Another way that I prove to myself that I am not my thoughts is sometimes I will say my name in my own head. And when I say it, who's saying it and who's hearing it? Who's saying it and who's hearing it? Think about it. Are you using degrading language that justifies a, a negative reality? Are you speaking down on yourself? Do you call yourself dumb? Do you call yourself stupid? Do you call yourself a newbie? Do you call yourself inexperienced? Do you speak negatively about yourself? Understand the power of the tongue. Understand that the things that you say have an actual impact in the life that you live. How many of you have spoken something into reality before? We like to talk about it when they're positive things, but we often don't remember the negative things that we say out loud or about ourselves. Your opinion is a source of your suffering, so you're better off leaving them behind opinions guys they're very rarely rooted in fact they're just preference they're how things you would prefer to go if they don't go your way you let it make you suffer release the opinion you release the suffering because now your opinion of a deal not working out, which means you're bad and wrong and not set out to be an, a wholesaler or an entrepreneur, if you let go of that opinion, now you can look at that situation as an opportunity for you to learn. And then lastly, we're not psychic. We don't know what's going on with people. Choose a story 
that allows you to be kinder to people and to think of them in a higher and better way. When someone is behaving in a way that is not to your liking, figure out a way to reframe the story of what this is happening, your experience of that story, so that you empower yourself in a better way. You don't know why people are doing what they're doing. So if you're making stuff up, you better make stuff up that's good. Hopefully that was an opportunity for you guys to kind of dive into a little bit of the mindset work that could be helpful to you. Guys, if you found many places where you have work to do, don't feel bad about it. It's all of us. We all have work to do. We all got somewhere that we can grow.